Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Read Lone Wolf. Fire on the water. We got a nice little cover there. And uh Piff is with me again. Hello. And uh we're starting Sorry, I don't have freaking liquid in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> we're starting the second book, Fire on the Water. Water. Yay. Okay, so um Would that mean there would also be smoke? Yeah, maybe. On the water? I am actually going to do this. Um, you know, in the last Lone Wolf, I always read the story so far. However, no, we, you know what? You should still read it in case there's people that are just starting with this one for some strange reason. Don't skip around. Okay. You... <laughs> I will tell you, it does get tedious later on, like when you're on book eight. And book seven, six, and five had all had the same three pages of the story so far, and it's the last two paragraphs that are different. <laughs> but okay, that's just good writing. <laughs> yeah. All right. In the northern land of Summerland, it has been custom for many centuries to send the children of the warrior lords to the monastery of the Kai. There, they are taught the skills and disciplines of their noble fathers. In olden times, during the age of the Black Moon, the Dark Lords waged war on Summerland. The conflict was a long and bitter trial of strength that ended in victory for the Summerlanding at the Great Battle of Macken Gorge. King Unlar and the allies of Durinor broke the Dark Lord armies at the Pass of Moitura and forced them back into the bottomless abyss of the Macken Gorge. Vashna, mightiest of the Dark Lords, was slain upon the sword of King Unlar called the Summer Sword, the Sword of the Sun. Since that age, the Dark Lords have vowed vengeance upon the Summerland and have and the House of Unlar. You are Lone Wolf, a young Kai initiate who was learning the secret skills of the Kai Lords. Two days ago, your peaceful country was plunged into a war when the vast Dark Lord army in suddenly invaded Summerland and completely destroyed the Kai Monastery. All of the Kai Lords were in attendance for the Feast of Fair Marn, and all were killed as the monastery was surrounded and destroyed, the walls collapsing in on the assembled company. Oh, that's how they died. Walls, I guess no. Sixth Sense doesn't protect you from falling walls. <laughs> <laughs> you, the only Kai Lord to survive the massacre, vowed then to avenge their deaths. You knew your first task had to be... survived. <laughs> Or just wasn't there and right. then injured himself anyway. On trees. Deadly, deadly trees. Fucking forests! <laughs> um, you knew your first task had to be to warn the king, for without the Kai Lords to lead their armies, your country, Summerland, would be unable to mobilize in time to drive the Dark Lords back. Your journey to the capital was perilous indeed. The enemy had overrun much of the country and were marching on Holmgard, the capital itself. But despite the many dangers, you fought your way through the capital and delivered your warning to the king's court. There you were greatly praised for your skill and bravery, but told your mission was not complete. With the Kai Lords dead, there remained only one power in all of Magnamund that could save your people from the Dark Lords, the Summer Sword. After the defeat of Vashna, the Summer Sword had been bestowed upon the allies of Durinor as a mark of trust and allegiance that exists between the two kingdoms. In return, King Elin of Durinor gave Summerland a magnificent golden ring bearing the royal arms of Durinor. This ring, known as the Seal of Hammerdal, uh, Hammerdal at the time King Elin vowed that if ever the shadow of the West should arise again to threaten Summerlun, Durinor would come to the aid of her ally. The King has given you the seal of Hammerdahl. Your quest is to travel to Durinor and fetch the Summer Sword back. But meanwhile, the enemy have broken through the outer defenses of the capital and are preparing to besiege the city wall. As Captain Deval of the Knight's Guard leads you to the Royal Armory to equip you for your mission, the King's words keep coming back to you. 40 days, Lone Wolf. We have strength to stand against them for only 40 days. Not 39. We've, we're good for 39. But only 40. You can build a kingdom in that amount of time. Alright. We don't need to choose new combat skills and all that stuff. Alright, so you get to choose one more um, hmm. discipline. Let's scroll that down. You have camouflage, hunting... Uh, mind blast, animal kinship, and mind over matter. Do you want me to reread any of those for you? Uh, no. 
Okay. Um. Does is mind blast like a constant? As you have to choose to use it in combat. Okay, no, I think what it is is you use it in combat unless the creature is immune to it. There are always some creatures that are immune. All right, so it's a plus two as a constant if it's not immune. Right. Um. Oh, also, I'm not sure how well it was um, described to you, but hunting makes it so that you don't have to eat meals. Yeah, choose a skill while hunting. No need for a meal when instructed to eat in your action chart. Unless you are in, like, a barren plain or deep in a cave or something. Okay. Because the idea is you just hunt for your food. How many foods do I have now? Zero? Mm-hmm. You might find some in your equipment, though, like because you get to get decked out for this mission. It's not one of the, it's, it. No okay. longer is it random numberly. You choose one. You actually get to choose what to take with you this time. Um, let's go with. Let's talk to some fucking animals, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Be, this is going to be good. Yay, <laughs> animals. <laughs> Aminals. Woohoo. They can teach me how to not hit myself in the head. Yeah. All right. Captain Duvall leads you to the Royal Armory where your green kai, a tunic and kai cloak have are taken from you to be repaired and cleaned. While you away, await their return, Captain Duvall hands you a pouch of gold for your journey. To find out how much gold is in the pouch... Pick a number on the number table and add 10 to it. So, Holy shit. you get to add 18. 18. To, you have Which 48. I'm max. Yeah, you have 48. I hope that I get to actually. Use yes, it. you will in this book. There was like one shop in the first book, but you missed it, so. <laughs> I was in this. I was looking around in the city. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, on the large table in the center of the armory, a number of items have been laid out for your choice. You may take two, any two of the following: a sword, a short sword, a short sword, two meals, a chainmail waistcoat which adds four endurance points to your total, a mace, a healing potion of lampsfur, a quarter staff, a spear, a shield. This adds two points to your combat skill when used in combat, or a broadsword. And of course, you you can still take any of the th stuff you're carrying with you. Um. Can I use a Warhammer and shield? Yes. You so can I also, get to if pick you. Two. Yes, but if you. Okay, here's the thing. If you find another Warhammer, you would have to choose whether you want to dual wield or use the shield. Alright. Um. Let's go. Which with... honestly is kind of redundant, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yes, it is. Uh, let's go with shield and. Um, sword, short sword, meals, chain mail, mace. Let's go with chain mail. Chain mail. Bam. I think that automatically... Uh, yes, it does. It increases your total. Good. Did it? Even if I do go hungry, that shouldn't at least compensate for one hunger. Yeah, okay. Why are you only at 29? I thought you had... 27 endurance points. No, I had 25. Oh, right, right, right. Never mind. I'm thinking bad stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Um, special items. You have a map. You already have the map. You have the seal of Hammerdahl. Put that Does there. Does that mean another warning? <laughs> no, no, no. Alright. Rules for combat, you already know. Alright, level of training you don't need to worry about all right kai wisdom your mission will be one of great danger for the dark lords and their servants are cruel and fierce enemy who give and expect no mercy use the map to help you steer a correct course for the capital make notes as you progress through the story for they will be of great help in future adventures many things that you find will aid you during your adventure some special items will be like of use <laughs> <laughs> others will be red herrings like i'm sure like the seal <laughs> There are many routes to the Hammerdale, but only one will enable you to retrieve the Summer Sword and return to Summerlun with a minimum of danger. A wise choice of Kai disciplines and a great deal of courage will enable any player to complete the mission no matter how bad their choice is. Awesome. Done. 
this is the game for me. Yeah! <laughs> Alright. There are... No, no, no. There's, there's 20 books in the Lone Wolf Saga. Not 8. Alright. Captain Duvall and his guards escort you to the Citadel Gate where a small covered wagon awaits you. As soon as you clamber in, the gates are thrown open and you are hurried away through the crowded streets of Holmgar. After a short but uncomfortable journey, the wagon stops and the driver pulls out open the canvas flap. This is the quay, my lord. The, uh, this is the key, my lord. There is your ship, the Green Scepter. As he speaks, the driver points across the key to a sleek trading caravel anchored near the harbor wall. The first mate's name is Ronan. You will find him waiting for you across the square at the Good Cheer Inn. Then the driver bids you farewell and quickly disappears into the teeming crowds. You reach the inn to find the front doors locked and windows shuttered, uh, shutters barred. You are trying to decide what to do next when a hand grabs your arm and you are pulled into the darkness. Do you wish to draw your weapon and attack the unknown assailant or do you wish to pull free of his grasp? Let's pull free of his grasp. Let's <laughs> give him the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> <sighs> Forgive me, my lord. I did not mean to startle you. The man seems nervous, and the open hand is asshole. extended towards you. I know, right? <laughs> you just all of a sudden attack anyone who puts a hand on your shoulder? <laughs> no, he pulled me, though. Can that's true, that's true. Um... He's shaking quite visibly. With some caution, you accept the gesture of friendship and sit with the man at the tavern table. The place is deserted, save for a couple of mice gnawing at a large chunk of cheese. Captain Kalman has instructed me to take you to the Green Scepter, but only if I'm sure you are the Kai Lord they call Lone Wolf. Can you prove your identity? You decide you must show a mastery of one of your Kai disciplines. You have healing, you have weapon skill, you have animal kinship. Well, there's also one at the bottom. Uh, you choose not to just demonstrate any of them. Just cross your arms and go... Trust me. I do want it. Let's <laughs> talk to some animals. Let's use our new ability that we learned for no reason. Yay. <laughs> Feeling hungry, you say? Peering at two busy house mice in the far corner? Perhaps you would care for some cheese. Using your Kai discipline, you order the two mice to bring the cheese to you. The sailor looks on in amazement as the two furry creatures deposit the cheese at your feet and then scurry away. Now, what I love about this the most, you're the Kai Lord, the last hope of the realm. And what can you do? Check this shit out. Dr. Mice. <laughs> Man, I feel confident now. <laughs> Did you see those two mice carry cheese to me? I'm gonna and... save this land. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I just I just I just don't when I think awesome warrior of power. <laughs> oh man. Good times. You are indeed a Kai Lord, says the sailor, but the astonishment on his face quickly changes to an unpleasant sneer. Or should I say you were? Dun -dun. Dude, guys, all he can do is control rats. Let's get him! <laughs> As he speaks, the door crashes open behind you, and you see uh, to see three harbor thugs advancing towards you. Each is armed with a scimitar, and you have no choice but to fight all three as one enemy. Okay. Let's do this. Let's kick their ass. Yeah. <laughs> I got a shield and a big old hammer. Uh-oh. This is gonna hurt anyway. <laughs> Uh-oh. Ow. You still did more damage to them. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, this is good. <laughs> Bam. Done. Oh, no, there's still four I left. No. Uh, and I can run through the side if I feel like it. No, I really don't, though. <laughs> no. There you go. Good job. All right. Win this combat? Hell yeah. <laughs> the sailor who claimed to be the first mate, Ronan, seems to have escaped during the fight. You quickly search the bodies of the harbor thugs, but find nothing of value. However, you do notice that each of them has a tattoo of a serpent on their... Oh, oh, oh there's the picture. Mm. Uh, on their left wrist, whoever sent them to kill you must already know of the importance of your quest. You leave the tavern by the side door and discover the dead body of a sailor lying beneath some stairs. Inside the collar of his blood-stained jacket is a tag bearing the name Ronan. This must be the real Ronan, and he must not know what clothes are his by sight. <laughs> <laughs> he has been murdered. You cover the body and turn towards the key, where the green scepter is anchored uh, about 300 yards from the harbor wall. 
Do you wish to use one of the many small boats um, to go to the key side, or do you wish to hunt down the imposter? You know what? Fuck the imposters. Do this shit. Do what? It's, it's hunt down the imposter. Okay, got it. And yes, thank you, Chad. It has been a while since I saved. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You quickly deduce that the imposter must have escaped by the main entrance of the tavern, and if he is still in the harbor area, he must be in or around the main square. You search the buildings and alleyways around the square, but there is no sign of him at all. Rather than waste more time in a fruitless search, you return to the quayside and untie a small coracle from its mooring. As you row towards the green scepter, you begin to feel uneasy that so early in your mission, your enemies already seem to have found you. Indeed. All right. As you paddle towards the sleek trade caravel, you notice to your surprise that the boarding ladder is being pulled up. A mean-looking sailor leans over the gunwale and curses at you. He seems to think that you are a refugee trying to stow away on board. But wait, I can control mice. Dude, check this shit out. <laughs> you should do that forever. <laughs> Whenever you want to just prove that you're lone wolf. Just have, like, two mice carrying cheese behind me, eh? <laughs> <laughs> But when you shout that you're a lone wolf and that you are ambushed by an imposter at the tavern, the ladder is soon lowered again. As you climb over the side of the ship, you are met by a tall man in a gold-braided uniform. His face is almost totally covered by the shock of bright red hair and br a bright red beard. Haul anchor, he booms. The crew spring into action as if their very lives depended on it. The captain ushers you below to his cabin, where he pours two glasses of Wanlo, a strong spirit. His face shows concern as you tell him what has happened. There is evil treachery at work, and the enemy is already has plans afoot to thwart your quest, he begins when you have told your tale. It seems that you have lost the element of surprise, and I have lost a courageous first mate. Let us only hope that the voyage to Durinur be swift and safe. You leave him to go up on deck just in time to see the outline of Holmgard on the horizon. With mixed feelings of pride and apprehension, you descend the stairway to your cabin as the last spire of the capital disappears from view. Oh, Joan, Joan. All right. Joan, 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 Joan. The following morning, you are woken by a cry of seagulls as they wheel and soar above the clipper. The wind is strong, and it fills the sails. You break fast with Captain Kelman, who is in better spirits than the previous day. He tells you that the Green Scepter is making good speed and should arrive at Port Bax, the main Durney's seaport, within a week. Suddenly, you hear a cry from the crow's nest. Land off the port bow! Land a port! You and the captain climb on deck and brace yourselves against the fresh sea breeze. That's Manon, the southernmost island of the Kirilun chain, says the captain, pointing towards the sharp, rocky coastline in the distance. Wreck Point, the traders call it. Many a ship has entered her days upon, uh, ended her days upon those granite teeth. Captain Kellman hands you an ornate telescope with which to take a closer look. The sharp rocks are festooned with the splintered skeletons of ships that have run aground, or were dashed against the shore in a storm. You stare in fascination at the shattered holes, imagining the terrifying scenes of their destruction. Then, suddenly, high above the pinnacles of the stone hovers a black shadow, a small rain cloud. It seems to be moving towards you. Suddenly, you realize that the cloud really is. It's a swarm of large Zan beasts, Zan beasts poss and possibly some Kran. The alarm is shouted along the deck. Prepare for battle! Do you wish to stay on the deck and ready your weapon, or do you wish to return to your cabin? <laughs> You guys got this good. Huh. Seems I'm the only battle-ready person on the ship. I think I might want to stick around a bit. <laughs> you guys seem like you got this. I'm going to go read a book. You got... We, you, you, hang on. You hang on. Go. I'm going to go get some mice. <laughs> Dude. I wonder if I can actually, like, talk to them. <laughs> Let me get me cheese. You were right! The cloud is made of huge land beast and many crown. Wow! <laughs> Thank you both for telling me that you yourself was correct. <laughs> a smaller species, but one that is just as deadly. Hanging below their black bellies are nets full of gax. As this land beast descends on the green scepter, a net of shrinking of shrieking gax crashes onto the deck behind you. Some are crushed in the fall, but many more have survived and waste no time attacking you. You must fight them as one enemy! Do this! Do it! You got to... Yeah. 
their face. Jesus Christ. That's I'm gonna do some major damage with this. Yeah, you are. Bam. I don't. I think even if I roll a one, they'll die. Congratulations! You just wiped out an entire group of Gax with two well-placed weapon blows. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> That's because I have a warhammer. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know how I'm wielding this thing. A fierce battle now rages through the ship as evil Gax fight to win control of the Green Scepter. Perched high above the masts, the Kran are rendering the sails with their talons and razor-sharp teeth, whilst the Zan's land beasts have flown back towards Wreck Point to pick up more nets of malicious Gax. Through the blood-strewn decks, a menacing shape looms. Both Gax and sailors are cut down by this creature as it advances towards you. It is a Drakkar, a cruel warrior of the Dark Lords, rising his jet-black broadsword. Oh, uh oh Black weapon! <laughs> <laughs> he attacks you. You must fight him to death. It's on. You <laughs> fucking black weapons! <laughs> <laughs> Cleaves him across the head. How dare you! <laughs> I know your kind. <laughs> Ooh. Oh god. Ooh. Looks That's like he hurt. hit me back. Yeah, he did. But slightly though. He didn't depreciate you. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> you tried to kill him. God damn it! <laughs> All right, I got him. Man, you're you're getting whittled down though. You're at 17 health points. That was after two battles in a row. Yep. I think I'm okay with this. <laughs> Seeing their master slain, the Gax falter and retreat towards the stern, and seeing a crazy man shouting obscenities about black weapons. <laughs> like, like, after you kill him, you just start hammering the sword. <laughs> Alright, uh, Captain Kelman rallies his crews and attacks, leading his men against the sm snarling creatures and driving them back until they leap into the sea to avoid the rain of swords. Knowing the battle to be lost, the Kran leave the mast and fly back to the distant coastline. Our thanks, Kai Lord, the captain says, says and shakes your hand. We are proud and thankful to have you with us. A cheer resounds along the decks and the crew voice their praise. You help tend the wounded whilst repairs are carried out on the damaged masts. Within two hours they are complete, and wind fills the sails, you continue your voyage to Durinor. Job well done. After three uneventful days at sea, you find the shipboard life rather dreary. If you have the Kai discipline of healing, any endurance points uh, that you may have lost in the adventure so far are restored. Bam! Nicely done. <laughs> This will bring your endurance point score back to your original one, if you do not possess... Okay, yeah. Uh, on the afternoon of the fourth day, you are taking, talking to an injured sailor on the deck when you smell smoke seeping from the hole. Now, remember, when I did this, I didn't have to go through a battle. So it says I'm talking to an injured sailor, and I'm like, how did he get injured? Isn't that important? <laughs> no. Alright, um, you sense a smoke seeping from the hold. Do you wish to enter the hold? Do you wish to shout fire? Or do you wish to warn the captain? Hmm. Nothing seemed, would have seemed to actually light anything on fire. Let's not make everyone hysterical. What are you gonna do? Let's enter the hold. Alright. You release the lock and slide back the hatch cover. A sudden draught of air causes flames to billow out of the hold. You stumble backwards, clutching your burnt face. Fire! Fire! The cry goes up. Oh, by the way, you lose two endurance points. All right. <laughs> In panic, the crew fights to put out the flames. It takes over an hour to control the blaze. The damage is considerable. The entire store of food and fresh water was in the hold, and the fire has completely ruined both as well as weaken the structure of the ship. As you stand surveying the wreckage, the captain approaches you, his face blackened by smoke. He is carrying something in a bundle under his arm. We must talk in private, my lord, he says quietly. Without replying, you turn and follow him into his cabin. <laughs> the mice were smoking. <laughs> what Damn the hell is this thing on fire? <laughs> God damn it. After taking care to close his door, the captain opens a mysterious bundle and tips the contents onto the cabin table. A large charred earthenware jug and several blackened rags drop in a heap. They give off a strange oily smell. There's a picture of the captain. He looks very not pleased. What the hell? 
This was no accidental fire, he says solemnly. This was an act of sabotage. The forward hold is the food store, yet I find this oil jug and these soaked rags upon the floor. Someone on the ship is prepared to risk his life to stop us reaching Doranor. You both stare at the burnt rags as if they hold the answer to your questions. Suddenly, a cry up on the deck breaks the silence. Ship ahoy! Ship off the port bow! Grabbing his sword and telescope, the captain disappears through the door and up to the ladder to the deck above. I swear, this journey... <laughs> <laughs> this ship is cursed or something. Do you wish to follow him, or do you wish to make a quick search of his cabin? Let's search his cabin. Alright. Keeping one eye on the door, you quickly search the drawers of an ornate chart table. The doors, uh, there does not appear to be anything unusual about the contents. You find mainly charts, island maps, and navigational instruments. You are about to abandon your fruitless search when you notice a small lever hidden below the tabletop. You push it open, and the panel flips open to reveal a small wooden box with a brass lock on it. You don't have the discipline of mind over matter, so do you wish to pry open the lock, or do you wish to replace the box and rejoin the captain on the deck suspecting something uh, before he suspects something is wrong? Six cents don't fail me now. It's nowhere to be found. When he means replace the box, he means like put place it back. the yeah put, put, it, put back. it back where it was yeah. Um. Let's put it back and continue. Probably a good choice. It seems our bird has flown, says the captain, pointing to a long boat moving swiftly towards another ship on the horizon. She flies no flag, and her hull is a strange shape. I ne'er seen it like seen the like. You watch as the long boat reaches a mysterious ship, as if by magic a sea fog appears from nowhere and engulfs the vessel. Moments later both the ship and the fog have disappeared. Pick a number! I will. I did. Go! The crew starts to whisper. You hear the words ghost ship and a cursed voyage, but the muttering stops when the captain's voice booms out in order for all hands on deck. Only the creaking of the timbers can be heard as Captain Kilman or climbs to the rear of the deck and addresses the crew. Men, we're three days sail from Port Bax. The fire has robbed us of our provisions and our fresh water has been fouled. We shall have to steer a new course for Ragadorn, where we will make shall make good our repairs and replenish our stores. That is all. The crew seems pleased by the captain's announcement and they set about their duties with renewed vigor. Then the captain turns to you. We're about eight hours from Ragadorn, my lord. My orders are to see you safely to Port Bax and pass you into the care of the summer London Consul, Lord Lieutenant Rygar. But time is not our ally, and I fear the repairs may take a week or more to complete. When we drop anchor, you will have to find your own route to Duranor, by sea with us or alone by the coast road. As you return to your cabin, the king's words haunt your thoughts. Forty days, Lone Wolf. We only have strength to hold out against them for forty days. You do not have long to complete your dangerous mission. Um, question. What about the longboat you sent out? Did you just leave it there? Yeah. No one cared? <laughs> <God. I didn't. laughs> Bunch of dicks. As dawn breaks, a fierce storm rises and you are awoken by a violent rocking of the ship. The floor of your cabin is awash and shouts of the crew can hardly be heard above the howling wind. You quickly dress, gather up your equipment, and make your way to the deck. You are soon joined by the captain, who takes hold of your arm and orders you to return to your cabin. Suddenly, as you start to go down, there is a thunderous crack. High in the rigging, parts of the mast snaps. You look up to see the shattered pole falling towards you. Pick a number. I'm Thank telling you, you dude. This ship is like the worst ship ever. <laughs> Can't wait to hit a zero. Nope. Eight. Fucking eight? <laughs> yep, at eight again. The mass smashes into the deck and Splinter's beams hit your head and you are knocked overboard. Gasping for air, you fight your way to the surface and catch hold of a hatch cover. You are half stunned and lose two endurance points. You pull yourself on this makeshift raft and cling to it with all your strength. If you are wearing a chainmail waistcoat, you must discard it now, otherwise be drowned for sure. Bye. Aww. Aww.
This is bullshit. <laughs> you feel dizzy and sick as the heaving sea buffets you relentlessly. You gradually slip into unconsciousness. When you awake many hours later, the storm has passed. But the position of the sun, uh, by hey, the position, this guy of must have some brain damage by this point. Probably. <laughs> By the position of the sun, you judge it to be late afternoon. In the distance, you can see a small fishing boat, and beyond it, on the horizon, land. The only trace of the green scepter is the hatch cover you are now sitting on. If you wish to use your cloak to try and signal the fishing boat, or do you wish to ignore the boat and paddle to shore? Yeah, I thought it was a trade... No, it's a fishing boat. Uh, let's go with the fishing boat. I want to see if I can not purchase something. Oh, okay. You desperately wave your Kai cloak above your head until the you are near exhaustion. I didn't have the Kai cloak. Huh? I thought that was one of the things that was... No, no, no. Uh, you always have your Kai cloak. Okay. You never lose that, baby. Eight! I got the lower chance. Of you conclude that the crew is either blind or have no intention of rescuing you. <laughs> Great. The fishing boat continues on its course out to sea, and without seeming to notice you, disappears on the horizon. Pulling off the loose plank from the hatch cover, you use it as a makeshift oar, you set out, paddling towards the shore. Son of a bitch. When you are only 50 yards offshore, you slip into the waves and swim towards land. When you finally reach the beach, you sink your fingers deep into the wet sand and slowly crawl your way up the beach to the shelter of some dunes. You are exhausted and very hungry. The only possessions that you have saved are your gold crowns, your backpack, and any special items that you did not discard in the storm. Any weapons that you possessed before the storm have been lost. Um, make necessary just with your action chart. However, a few hundred yards away, you notice clumps of small twisted trees laden with purple flute. Okay, and there's a back, there's a note. Though you keep your backpack itself, you lose everything contained within it, in addition to your weapons and chainmail waistcoat, if you had one. Well, at least you keep your shield. <laughs> oh boy. Yay! Good. Oh, you had nothing in your backpack anyway. But you got no weapons. Yay. You've got a shield and no weapon. You're Captain America. <laughs> this is the best. Yeah. Around. You don't have the Kai discipline of hunting. Do you wish to eat the fruit or do you wish to lose three endurance points? Let's poison ourselves <laughs> and eat the fruit. Done. They are Larnuma trees, and their fruit is very nutritious, as well as being sweet and juicy. After your meal, you feel much stronger. You pick enough for two meals and store it in your backpack. Oh, shit. <laughs> yes, can I have another one, please? Thank you. <clears throat> Looking behind the trees, you see a wide coast road that stretches into the distance to the left and right. There are no signposts. It has a symbol. It is not made clear that the left path leads to the east and the right path to the west, even though it does so in parallel sections. Okay, so um, left That's is east. Map. Yeah, left is east, right is west. So, map of Summerland. So, left is this way, and you're trying to hit here, I think. Right. And right is back home. Let's not go back home. <laughs> so let's go left. Wait, wait, where are we? Like, uh, name-wise. We are... Ragadorn. Around here. We're around here right now. Okay. Uh, then let's go towards... Or... Away... Uh, so... Whatever... Whichever just... way is towards Ragadorn, right? Yes. Okay, which is, uh... Let's not go backwards. East, so left. You walk for over three hours along the lonely coast road before night begins to fall. You are very tired and you decide to get some sleep and continue at dawn. You remember the, the tales told by your Kai masters of the wildlands between some of London and Durinor, where packs of wild dogs roam wastelands at night. With these stories in mind, you decide to spend the night in the safety of a large leafy tree at the edge of the road. I think the rest is very refreshing. Restore two endurance points. You don't even need to. But you're going to do it anyway. Although you awake to a cold, rain-swept dawn, the branches of the tree and your kai cloak have kept you warm and dry during the night. Looking along the coast road, in the distance, you can see a wagon heading towards you. If you wish to get down from the tree and flag it down, or do you wish to try and jump on it as it passes beneath your branch? Let's flag it down. 
It is a large passenger wagon similar to those used by highway travelers in Summerland. The driver pulls the horses to a halt and stares at you from under a wide brim of his hat. You ask where he's bound for. We're bound for Ragadorn, due there by noon today. The seat, a seat will cost you three gold crowns, but you can ride on the roof for only one. Do you wish to pay three gold crowns? Let's ride in luxury, because we got that sort of gold. Yes, you do. Hang on. Oh, good. It already uh, detected it. Nice. 